Kadang yalam jangka kam, kekong anjala rengat, kekong agenas karsieng, kekong wan penhun karsentil, kila penlang ya kejelang ban penpau, ya kejingsun, halor kejing syaksiat jab, jongki sanggut ki rangba hamukro. Buat ban penpau ru, ya kejing penrem, halor kejing syak nyoben ki bar jelah kejelang. Hagan nge sengi lawan banyak dan lang, ki riu shimen na ki kenhun, baper per, ki badan hasor shalom. Na kalian ki nongkren gila penpau ya kejeng sosi ke jongki. Hakabala nyau ya ki kum kita ki bar jelah, wat la, ya ki lakha, bad la im, haka jelah me khalaya da ki senem. Haka bedei bad kene, ki nongkren gila penpau ya kejeng e, haka bedei, bad kejeng sya nyau ben jongki, haka im lang ke salang. Bad gila ong ba, ki briew ki dey ban im lang kumju, bad kam dey ban don kenu kenu kejeng nyau ben, bad ban pencitom, haki linti yaad ke jongki. You know, we are just emerging from something where the best of humanity came to the front as y'all gave accounts of what each one did and so on. And from that, society is limping back. The kind of impact it has had on the poor people is unbelievable. You know, it's tremendous and people are just limping back. And as Angela says, this kind of hate, we are the losers. And that kind of keeps resonating in my ears that we are the losers if we do not stop this culture of hate. And I do want to connect this culture of hate really to the broader context of what is happening in the country today. It is not just Minhala. It is a broader context of hate in which we are living. And we have to find ways of generating oxygen amongst ourselves to get rid of that hate. And I agree with Mr. Agarwal, we condemn the indiscriminate firing of the Assam police in no uncertain terms. And why was the Assam police allowed to do that? And I see it as the culture of impunity that we find in the country and something which has been spreading and spreading. When it hits our own community, then we are shaken. But this culture of impunity of the Assam police has come to the fore and again and again. We didn't raise our voice two years back, was it, when there was an eviction drive and people were gunned down. They didn't belong to our community, to our religious uh, persuasion and to our ethnic identities, so none of us or few of us only raised our voices. It was the same level of impunity by, in which people were gunned down and there was a horrific image of a government uh, media person jumping on the dead body of the person who was gunned down. So, you know, this culture of impunity has been creeping in and we are kind of becoming apathetic to the violence and to the culture of impunity which is taking us into a cesspool of dark and you know unimaginable future so many voices have been reacting to the violence in Jante hills the gunning down of the six people but also to the violence that happened here and as, to, as Mr. Singh had said, actually, sometimes much of this, especially the violence on the street, is being done by fringe elements. But somehow their voices seem to be loud. And we need to ensure that we am amplify voices like the ones today. We need to amplify the call for justice, for peace, for rights, voices against corruption, voices for a better system, voices for development and a development which is inclusive for everyone. I think that is so important. So, I mean the press are also here. I think that much more <coughs> space needs to be given because even after the violence that happened on 28th October, and again on 27, 22nd November on the streets of Shillong. Believe me, majority of the people are saying enough is enough. And we need to amplify that voice. The state we find ourselves in 
in Meghalaya. Corruption has hit the roof, where is on all the developmental indicators. All of you have said it. Education, healthcare, jobs, safety and security is all in the dumps. And we need to reclaim all of these things again. We need to go back to our constitution. Many people are saying that I too am indigenous. You know, these words sometimes, you know, naming and labels, they also have their own definitions and meanings. So somebody will contest whether you're indigenous, whether only tribals are indigenous. And also similarly, people will contest the use of other words. For instance, we have seen even in social media, there are people who try to uh, instigate, you know, when violence happens. So they talk about uh, a purging, they talk about a massacre, but we have to put these things in perspective also. Because we're giving people outside of the state, people who have no stakes here, people who don't have a love for this place, you know, we're giving them the chance to further divide and further cause chaos in our own backyard. So the words we choose also, I think, are really important. And as another speaker had spoken, this culture of impunity. So we need to put forward solutions. So how can we address a culture of impunity if we pick and choose our fights? We cannot pick and choose our fights. Because many times, you know, when uh, Kong Agnes or me speak, we are always accused that, oh, you are anti Khasi. I'm not anti Khasi. I'm not pro Dakar. I'm not anti Dakar. I am a person who thinks, who believes deeply that each one of us has value. We have to put humanity first. But somehow that gets lost in all of the noise. And so we should always be a little cautious not to allow anybody to capture and not to try and say an eye for an eye or start comparing our crimes. How many more people on this side or how many more people on that side have been hit or killed or... A crime is a crime. And this, this, this uh, level of impunity, we have to call it into question. And by saying that whenever there's a crime, there has to be speedy justice. There has to be better policing. We, the public, need to know how many arrests you've made. After a few weeks, after a few months, we need to know whether there has been a conviction. Most times we don't know. And so it goes on like that and there's rumor mongering and there's feeding you know, into the fear and the insecurity more. So I'm I just wanted to put forward the suggestion. And the other thing I think which is really important is that while our constitution has given us tribals, Dalits, certain rights, certain protections under the sixth schedule, we also need to know that our identities keep shifting. For instance, from a religious point of view, I am a majority Christian in this state. But we know that there are certain pockets of people who still practice the indigenous faith who also feel discriminated in this state. Similarly, we know that in terms of communities of language, there are people who are minorities here, but you may not be minorities elsewhere. And so the yardstick for us as a state, as a society, to see not just whether we are civilized, but whether we have a hope that we will progress, is how we ensure the safety, security, and well-being of the minorities. And when I say minorities, it depends on you, how you feel, and whether you are a minority in a particular context. So here in, in, in Meghalaya, for instance, a non-Khasi, a non-Christian is a minority. And it is our job, you and me, to ensure first and foremost that they are protected, that they get safety and security as a right. Because protection also, as somebody said, it can be based on a payout system, on a hafta system, on a gundagari system. And that we have to reject. We cannot, cannot ever ex 